Hi, what's up? My name is Samantha. Welcome to my channel. I probably shouldn't say that at the beginning. Welcome to my channel where we don't swear. I'm not sure how long it's been since I posted my last hormone update. I know that it was last year, so it's been at least almost six months. It's probably been about nine months since I posted my last one. I honestly, I could pull it up my phone and check, but like, we ain't gonna do that right now. I'm thinking it's been about a year. As you guys can tell from the title of this video, a lot of things have changed in my hormone replacement therapy routine, you could say. <laughs> I have completely stopped taking estradiol pills um, forever, permanently. I am no longer taking them. Just to kind of refresh you guys' memory or if you haven't seen me before, just to get you guys caught up, I'm transgender. <laughs> So I take hormone replacement therapy, which is something that replaces the natural hormones that my body makes with the hormones of that of a cis female. For the first four or five years of my transition, I took four milligrams of estradiol every day, the little estradiol blue tablets. I think I still have some. Let me go look. Actually, no, I don't want to get like flagged for like showing drugs or something on here. Ooh, sorry. But yeah, estrogen pills are what most trans women start off taking. I also was taking spironolactone, which is a testosterone blocker to block the natural production of testosterone in my body to get those testosterone levels down. I'm no longer taking spironolactone for a different reason. It's not because of the things that I'm gonna talk about later on with the estradiol pills. I had bottom surgery, so my body doesn't naturally produce testosterone anyways. So there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing for the blockers to block out, so they're just not necessary. So the question that I'm sure all of you are thinking right now is how am I surviving without taking any estrogen or estradiol pills? And the answer to that question is I switched over to injections. So injections are a bit different than the estradiol pills. It's still the estradiol chemical, but instead of taking it sublingually every single day, you would um, inject yourself with a liquid form of estrogen every so often. For me, I do it every week. Some people choose to do it every other week. Some people choose to do it twice a week. It really just depends on your preference. For me, I like to keep my mood as stable as possible. So I like to keep it at least every week. The more often you do it, the more even your mood is going to be. But also I didn't want to go up to twice a week because that's that's a lot. So I'm at once a week. I don't really want to talk about the dosage that I'm taking. Um, it is a little bit lower than it would be if you are, you know, pre-op because obviously if you are pre-op, you are fighting against the testosterone in your body. Oh yeah, I should probably mention, usually when people do injections, they either take testosterone blockers with them or they use a large enough amount of estrogen to naturally suppress the testosterone. Kind of confusing. I'm not a doctor. I don't know exactly how all this works. I'll link the studies that I read down below. Also, shout out to literally Sophie for teaching me all this stuff. She got my hormone game in fucking check. So shout out to you, girl. Thank you. I know that you guys are probably gonna ask, so there are a few different sites that you can inject the estrogen into. The way that it's described as the most effective is in your, it's in your butt. I don't know the exact terminology for like the muscle or whatever you're trying to inject into, but when I went to my doctor, she was like, I don't really feel comfortable having you inject yourself there because there are a lot of like, I think it's the sciatic nerve that runs out of your butt area. And if you inject into that, you can do a lot of irreversible damage which I was not trying to do, so. She told me to just inject it into my hip. It is just a subcutaneous injection, meaning it just goes in like a half an inch into like the fatty layer of my skin. I'm not injecting into like the muscle or anything like that, which I know that trans men have to do, which is scary to me. So yeah, thankfully I don't have to do that. The injection itself is pretty painless. I've never really been that big of like a needle person, you know what I mean? Like I don't like needles obviously, but I've never been like, I can't have a shot. Like I hate needles. I have a phobia of needles. I'm not that kind of person. What else? I'm trying to like tell you guys all about my injections before I get into like the why of why I switched over. I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and talk about the reasons why I switched over to injections. There are multiple reasons why I switched over to the injections. Um, the first one, which is completely my own fault, is I am very, very inconsistent with my medications. Estradiol is one of those things that you don't have to take at the same time every single day, but it definitely helps if you do, but you do have to take it every single day for it to be as effective as possible. It's also probably important to mention um, about my doctor. I mentioned earlier that I wanted to talk a little bit about my first endocrinologist. If you are not sitting down, you might wanna sit down because this shit is about to piss you off because it pissed me off. I started going to this endocrinologist in the beginning of my transition and she put me on, like I said, whatever doses that I was on. And for the longest time, I didn't really question it. I didn't think much of it because this doctor was well known in the trans community. Like my gender therapist sent me to this doctor to like get on HRT. I trusted this doctor. I let them, you know, do what they thought was best. I started experiencing a lot of symptoms. I went into like the little patient portal thing to look at my blood results. 
And it said that my estrogen levels were about 40. I don't really know the units that it was in. It was at about 40 and it was marked as high. And that's the same results that I had seen for like every single other time that I looked at my results. I didn't really think much of it until I saw some of the research and stuff that is out there on HRT. I was looking at it. I saw that the normal level that you're supposed to be at for estrogen is around two to 300, way above 40, like way, way, way above 40. I did some more like digging around in my little patient portal thing or whatever. And I discovered that my endocrinologist had still had me listed down as male in the system. So my endocrinologist wouldn't up my estradiol dosage to get me to like the right feminization point, the right amount of hormones in my body. It's not even about feminization, it's just about health. You need to have hormones in your body to be healthy for bone health, for sexual health, for all these kind of things. I don't know what happened, but she just didn't realize. And um, this made me really, really upset, obviously, because these last four or five years, I've trusted this doctor to give me the medicine that I needed and she wasn't. Luckily at this point in my life, I had just found a new primary care practitioner who specializes with transgender patients. And so I went to her and I talked to her about it and she was like, yeah, that your level should be much higher than that. Like this is not right, blah, blah, blah. I can actually prescribe you hormones if you would rather just switch the responsibility over to me. I trusted my primary care practitioner way more and I said, okay, please, please do. <laughs> so at that point I switched over my hormone therapy to her. And at the same time, I switched to injections. Like I said, it's hard to say exactly what was causing the symptoms that I was having, but I think it was the combination of being on too little estrogen and also being on estradiol pills. I believe that estradiol pills are much less effective than estradiol injections. Again, I'm not a doctor. This is just my opinion. This is just what I've seen in, the own, in my own personal research. And you don't have to believe it. You can listen to your doctors. I don't really care what you do. But I've read that when you ingest estradiol pills, um, it goes through your body and stuff and then your liver actually ends up processing it and converting it into something called estrone, which actually has negative impacts on feminization. That day that I talked to my PCP, she prescribed me estradiol valerate, which is a liquid form of estradiol. Um, she gave me the needles and everything that I needed and she taught me how to do it. And from that day on, or I think like two or three days after when I actually got the prescription, I have been on injections. When I switched, the first thing that I noticed was a dramatic increase in my energy level, which was something that I struggled with a lot before switching. My energy was so low that it was it was just like miserable. Three to four weeks after I switched, I noticed an increase in my libido, which again was something else that I was struggling and kind of insecure about before I switched. After I started injections, I also started working out with my increased energy level. I think a combination of the energy level and just being on the new form of estrogen, it really helps my weight go down and it helps my weight redistribute the way that I, you know, imagined that it would. All the stuff that I used to struggle with, I literally wrote down a list. Decreased libido, fatigue, weight gain, depressed mood. I had dysphoria about my body shape. All of these things were a direct result of my low estrogen levels. I don't want this video to be like, drop your hormones, go switch to injections, blah, blah, blah. I want this video to be a wake up call. I want you to take control of your own hormone therapy and I want you to do the research that is necessary to learn about the therapy that is right for you and the path that you really wanna take. I low key lived in the shadows for about four years. I trusted my doctors to do what was right and they didn't, they just didn't. I don't know if pharmaceutical companies or you know the medical community or whoever is pushing certain types of medications you know so encouraging doctors to prescribe a certain brand or a certain type of medication but i know that injections are not favored among these doctors and so they often tell you oh injections will give you an increased uh, chance of blood clots and stuff like that which really just isn't true the research that i personally have done shows that only high estrogen levels coming from estradiol pills can cause an increased chance of blood clots, not injections. But again, this is just the research that I have done. I'm not a doctor. I like, I'm not a scientist or anything like that. This is just the research that I have seen. And again, they'll be linked down below. <sighs> I'm like out of breath. I feel like I was talking so fast. I did drink a Red Bull before this to try to like gather my brain together so I could get everything out in this video for you guys. But <sighs> I like need a breath. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is it for this week's video. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I encouraged you to take control of your own hormone replacement therapy. But yeah, I love you guys so much. Be sure to read these links down below. You know, they're very informative and they're very, very important. Get on it. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. Leave a comment, ask any questions that you guys wanna ask. I read literally all the comments, so don't be shy. Go say hi. Oh, that kind of rhymed. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you next week. Bye guys.